My name is Maroon Bixen, and I'm going to be talking about how to invent a neuromodulation device in three easy steps. So when we're talking about neuromodulation devices, we're talking about medical devices that apply energy into the body. It's usually uh, or often electrical stimulation, but it could be other forms of energy with the goal of uh, improving health and extending life. So one example of a neuromodulation device that you could get in uh, your local pharmacy would be a TENS device. Uh, TENS device that's indicated for the treatment of uh, pain and the instructions to use the device indicate that the device should be placed over the part of the body that is experiencing discomfort and the intensity is turned on until you hear tingling and then through a, a gate control mechanism, the pain is reduced. So this is an example of electricity being used to um, treat chronic pain. Now, uh, that's an example of a non-invasive wearable device. There's many other kind of technologies out there. Uh, some of them would fall into the implant technology, things that you would need to have uh, inserted inside your body, like deep brain stimulation, um, spinal cord stimulation, vagus nerve stimulation. There are other treatments that are not implanted but are still considered um, substantial enough that they're only available in the hospital, uh, at the medical center. So that would be things like transcranial magnetic stimulation um, or certainly something like ECT. And finally, you have this sort of wearable category that TENS falls into, but also things like transcranial direct current stimulation. So when I'm talking about how to invent neuromodulation devices, what I'm gonna say is actually universal for all of them. And it gets very much to this notion of dose and how dose drives the outcomes of neuromodulation, okay? So what is neuromodulation dose? So let me frame that in the context of first, what is drug dose? So we know that when we get a drug to use, it is uh, a prescribed dose. It could be something like, you know, uh, one gram of this um, molecule and we would take it uh, one time per day for four days. And so right away we see that the, the prescription, the dose has a lot to do with what we intake um, it is something that can be prescribed in the sense that it could be written down on a piece of paper and you could follow those instructions. The same drug might be used for different indications, right? It, it might be uh, have a label for depression, but it's also used for pain. And so the dose of the, the drug doesn't uh, explicitly say what it's going to do to you. And the dose of the drug also doesn't necessarily say how it works. Right, so when we're told to get, be taken a certain drug, the prescription is the dose is really simply what we're intaking. And so we need to use that same kind of thinking when we're talking about neuromodulation dose. Again, neuromodulation dose is gonna be something that is prescribed, right? It is what is intaked uh, or applied to the body. And the same neuromodulation dose could be used for multiple indications. The indications for use, what it's used for, is not explicit in the dose. And similarly, how it works, the mechanism of action, while maybe very important, right, is not part of the prescribed dose. So we see this, how this, this sort of analogy between thinking about drug dose and neuromodulation dose, but I still didn't say what is the dose then, um, given the sort of high level view of what, what, what it should be, what is it exactly? So neuromodulation dose is defined as any aspect of the device that governs how energy, maybe electricity, enters the body. Okay, that's a fancy, a lot of words there, but it comes down to just two very simple things. The first one is where you put the electrodes, or in the case of magnetic stimulation, the coil on the body, right? So for example, you might have an electrode that is uh, one centimeter square, and you place it next to the vagus nerve. That is the position of the electrode, right? The second thing, and the final thing in neuromodulation dose, is the waveform that is played by device into the electrode or into the coil. So this might be something like a, a waveform with a one milliamp maximum intensity and it's pulsed at 100 hertz and that's it. These two things, electrode or coil position and the waveform that is applied to them completely define neuromodulation dose. Now, how do these two things impact what happens in the body? Well, generally speaking, the position of the electrodes or the coils will impact which part of the body is stimulated. If I put the electrodes near the vagus nerve, I expect the vagus nerve to be stimulated. Um, if I put the uh, transcranial device over a particular part of the head, uh, I expect that the region under that device will be the most likely to be stimulated, right? So the areas nearer the electrode or the coil get the most energy. The waveform that you play into it 
governs how those brain regions respond, right? So the position will determine where the energy goes and the waveform will determine how that energy then changes neuronal function. For example, on a very basic level, we might imagine that if we apply 100 hertz pulses, we may produce firing of those neurons at 100 hertz, though it can certainly be more complicated than that. So these are the two aspects of dose uh, that govern how the body responds. Now I'm gonna suggest that the entirety of, of neuromodulation dose innovation comes down to these two parameters and, and, and that neuromodulation dose it is, it, the design of dose is the innovation. Why do I say that? Two devices that apply the same dose to the body are identical. Right? So if I have a green device and a yellow device and I'm applying them both to my body and they provide the same dose, the response of the body will be exactly the same. So that means that dose is innovation. Dose is what distinguishes one device from another. And so if I wanted to create a new device, right, the purple device, the only way that purple device could be new is by somehow changing dose, either position or waveform. So I think dose is really central in the design process. Now, it doesn't mean that other things don't matter. Things like battery life, whether something is MRI conditional, uh, how usable something is. I don't want to underplay how important these other things are, but there is this paramount role of dose, right? So that's what I'm saying that neuromodulation dose is at the core of design and innovation. There's another very important point, however. Each neuromodulation device can be programmed to deliver multiple doses. So I may have a device and uh, I may put it on my vagus nerve, uh, but it may have three different frequencies that can apply, one hertz, 100 hertz, or 1,000 hertz. Or the same device, let's say that TENS device, can be put on the shoulder, uh, it could be put on the back, it could be put on the knee, depending on where the pain is coming from. And so in both aspects, both in space and in waveform, every single neuromodulation device actually has a set of possible doses. How we pick the dose from the set of possible doses is something that I call dose instructions. And that is an essential part of understanding how neuromodulation devices work and also where neuromodulation innovation and invention comes from. Again, TENS is a perfect example. What do you do as far as position? You put it over the part of the body that it hurts. What do you do as far as waveform? You increase the intensity until you feel tingling. So at a very uh, cartoonish, but I think actually accurate level, this is how neuromodulation works. You have a device. The device applies a dose that, is, that arrives at the, at the patient, and that is the only thing that drives the outcomes. But the neuromodulation device has knobs on it. It can be positioned in different parts of the body. So the neuromodulation device must come and must ship with dose instructions that explain how to adjust the dose. And this is where the feedback comes in, right? Because now we can look at the outcomes are we, do you feel the tingling? Uh, is, is the depression treated or not? Um, functional imaging, EEG, fMRI, whatever it is, we can use outcomes in order to feed back and then update the dose. So therefore, personalizing it. And this is something that in fact is very distinct from drugs. I can't send out a drug to a, a patient and then ask them to, to slightly change uh, the chemical structure of it. That could easily make something fatal, right? It's not practical and it's not safe, but with neuromodul neuromodulation, not only is it possible, this is universal, right? Almost essentially all neuromodulation devices have a dose set and, they're, and it's not the same dose applied to everyone. The dose to everyone is adjusted based on the dose instructions. All right, having covered that, we can now get to the main point, which is how to invent a neuromodulation therapy and there's gonna be uh, three steps here. The first one is you need to specify what you wanna use it for, an indication. I wanna treat pain, I wanna treat depression, uh, and so on, right? This is the application. However, I'm gonna say right away, this is often not limiting. Now, not limiting is a bit of a legal term, but what I'm trying to say here is that um, you could invent something for depression, uh, but perhaps that same invention, that same dose, may be able to translate into, into other um, indications as well. What you do have to do, however, is you have to specify the design of the device, and you do that in terms of dose, right? Remember, there's two aspects to dose, right? There is where it could be placed, and there's the waveforms that are applying to it. But you don't necessarily just pick one, rather you pick a set. These are the possible 
electrode placements or core placements or designs. These are the possible waveforms. This is the set that I'm working with, right? And this is essentially the dose set that my device, my invention can provide. And finally, you need to provide dose instructions, which is how to pick from the possible dose set, right? For each subject, uh, if the device can provide between one hertz and a thousand hertz, how do I adjust the frequency for that subject? This step is an essential for neuromodulation invention because it is essential for neuromodulation. And that's it. Those are the three components, the, the recipes of a neuromodulation device invention. So here's just one example of how that's done. It's just a, a patent I happened to pull up. Um, the invention of um, vagus nerve simulation by Jake Zabara. Uh, at the top line there, you have the indication for use. Again, you can see actually there's multiple indications here and they're not necessarily limiting. And then below that, you have the dose set, not one dose, but a dose set, right? In this case, the electrode position, right, is applied to the vagus nerve, and you have a frequency range and, a, and an intensity range and a, um, a pulse width range. And then in a later uh, aspect of this invention, uh, you have once again the indications for use, you once again have the dose set, and then you have a way to adjust the dose set. Now in this case, the suggestion is that you'd measure um, some sort of electrical activity from the body, and then you would use that electrical activity in dose instructions to pick from the doses that are available to you. And I'm just picking this as one example, but you can pull up any uh, neuromodulation device invention that might be uh, part of a patent disclosure, and you will see the same recipe. How do I know that? Because it has to be there, because this is these, these are the um, elements of a neuromodulation device invention. So again, how do you invent a neuromodulation device? First, think of what you wanna, you wanna use it for, but maybe think a bit more broader. Focus on dose. And think about not the one dose, but the dose set that your device can do, right? The, the, the possible combinations. And then provide along with that instructions. How do you pick from that dose set in order to produce the desired outcome?